Um, hello, so continuing on weekly contest 337, this week's contest, the third problem, the number of beautiful subsets. Um, so this problem says we get a, an array of positive numbers and we get a positive integer k. And basically a subset of number is called beautiful. Um, the definition of beautiful is if it doesn't contain any two integers uh, with an absolute difference equal to k. So we get k and we get the array. And a subset of this array is called beautiful if it, no two integers in that subset have an absolute difference of k. Okay, And um, here, a subset definition is non-empty. It's It can be empty. Um, and basically, the definition of subset is that you can delete elements, right? And possibly just use the entire, or use the entire array, right? Um, and two subsets are different if basically they don't, we del the elements we deleted from the original array are different. So just the def normal definition of a subset, right? So here with this first example, um, we can create four um, beautiful subsets. So for example, every first every array or subset with one element, um, it has it's it's a beautiful, right? Because um, the difference is not going to be k. Because also, um, if you look here, k is um, bigger or equal to one, okay? So the first thing we can observe is that any single element, each single element is a valid subset. So here we, we take all the single element subsets. And then two and six, the difference between the elements is only four. And so it's different than K and we have only two elements. So this one is a valid subset. Um, we can not take two and four because the difference is two. And so that would be invalid which is because it's equal to k. We can't also take 2, 4, 6 because there are two elements, 4 and 2, that have a difference of k. So the only valid ones are these, and this is 4, so we return 4. So that's the idea. Um, now, how do we handle it? Um, okay, so how do we tackle this? So the first thing to think about is, so the problem says in a s valid subset or a beautiful subset, no two elements have to have a difference of k. So let's say we, we take an element x as part of the subset. What does that mean? That means we can't take any other y value that, such that the difference is going to be equal to k. Right? This we can't take. So what can we tell about what are the values of y that are not possible? Well, the values that are not possible that will give us this, well, either x minus y is going to be equal to k, then this would be means basically that x minus k is equal to y. So basically that means we can't take x minus k because then we will have the absolute difference be equal to k because x minus x minus k is going to be equal to this one goes out, this one becomes k is going to be equal to k. So we can't take x minus k. What What's other thing we can take? We can't take also x plus k because if you do that x minus x plus k, that's going to be the absolute difference of minus k, which is going to be k. Okay, so basically, if we take this means if we take x. So if x we take x in our subset, that means we can't take um, x minus k and x plus k. If those are in the array, we can't take them. Okay, and so this sort of the, uh, with a subset, generally, to construct a subset, we use backtracking, right? What's the, what's the usage of backtracking? Well, every step with backtracking, what we do is we, we sort of do some sort of DFS where for each index in the array, you would have only two choices, either to take that index or not take it, okay? And then if you take the index, you add it to your subset. If you don't, you don't add it to your subset, right? So here we can do actually something similar, except we have one extra condition is that if the current index, right, is equal to one of these for every x already in the subset, we shouldn't take it, okay? That's the only additional thing that we will do in addition to, um, we will do in addition to just the backtracking for subset. So how do we then, how do we know this? How do we do know it? Well, we can just keep a diction because we want it for all of the x's we added to the subset. So what we can do is just keep a dictionary, right? That says how many times each 
how many times each x value in the subset occurred right um so we can just every time we add um sorry what what i mean by that actually is we can have a dictionary that just records the values that we shouldn't take right because for every x we shouldn't take x minus k and x plus k so let's just record let's say call them like prohibited values right or illegal values right so every um one is going to take x minus k and x plus k so we just record how many of these um so we just need to record this thing called illegal values so that for every index before considering taking it we check we make sure it's not illegal before taking it if it's illegal we just we do not take it we have only one choice so that's the idea um now now how do we um and, th and that's pretty much actually the idea here. So how do we um, how do we do it? So every t basically we have a DFS function that goes through index, right? And when do we know we are done? We are done when we reach the end of the list. So when this is equal to the length, that means we we found a valid subset, um, and so we sh we need to count it, right? Um, and then we need to stop here. But otherwise we have two choices: either take index. Or don't take index. Don't take index is easy because we just go to the next index, right? So we just call DFS on index plus one. But take index is a little bit tricky. We first need to make sure that this x value is not illegal in the subset so far. In our case here, we actually don't need to keep track of the subset. We just need to, as long as it's valid, we will proceed. If it's invalid, we will stop. We only keep track of the illegal value. So just first, we want to make sure that this number, which is equal to, let's call it num, is going to be equal to the number at index. We want to make sure it's not illegal. So let's just say if num is not in illegal, okay, or even better, we can just actually just check if the number of its occurrences is zero. So if illegal number is equal to zero, that means we can't take it, okay? So if we can't take it, we want to do DFS of index plus one. But since we are taking it, we need to mark x minus k and x plus k as illegal. So we need to just mark them here as x minus k plus one. And here illegal um, x plus k plus one. And then when we finish the function, we need to just revert this operation. So we just do minus one for each, right? Um, we'll write this detail in the code later. but that's roughly the idea here. Now you may say, why are we adding plus one? Why are we ju mar just marking it that as illegal? Because, because let's say you have uh, two twice in the subset, right? And then the first call for the first two is done. We still can't take two minus plus k and two plus k because of the second one. So that's why we do plus one so that we take into account repeated values in the subset. That's the idea here. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. And then at the end, we can just return this count here. Um, but the main idea here is that to work backwards from if there is any element in the subset, we can't take any element that is equal to x minus k or, or x plus k. And then for subset, we can just use the normal backtracking with this extra condition, right? Um, and that's pretty much it. So let's implement this, make sure it passes our test cases. Um, okay, so let's implement this function. So first we need our DFS with an index and we want to return here. We want to call it initially with zero and we want to keep track of the number of beautiful subsets in this variable that we are going to return at the end. Okay, and then we need a dictionary for illegal values. So let's call it just collections dot um, default dict with int as default value. Okay. Um, and then here we have two choices, either take index or don't take it. Not taking index is easy, we just call DFS on the next index. Now here, we have the extra condition, we can take it only, we can take um, x equal to nums at index only if, right? 
only it's if it's not illegal, right? Which basically means uh, for every let's call this actually a num for every x in subset, right? Um, num is different is not x minus k and not x plus k. Okay, so that's the idea here. And the way we do that is just we check if illegal of num is equal to zero because if it was illegal, we would have added it to, we, we add all the x minus k and x plus k in for all the previous values of the subset in this illegal dictionary, right? So here, let's just first make sure we add the index. Um, we uh, set the value, uh, the variable properly. And now here, what we need is, since we are taking, now this means we are taking it, right? We are taking index, so we need to mark minus k and mark plus k as illegal because if we take it, that means we can't take and mi minus k and x plus k. So let's call it x here. We can't take x minus k and x plus k. And then we go through index plus one. But once we exit, this means we proceed without taking it. So after the words, we need to reset. That's what you do with backtracking. You choose first, and then you do your choice, and you go all the way with the recursion, and then you undo your choice. That's what you do with backtracking. And so we need to undo our choice here. Um, and so we do that by subtracting minus one. And the reason we only subtract, we don't set it to zero is because maybe there was another x value in the subset before. And so we st if there was, let's say, x minus k is equal to two, we can't take, we cancel this one, but we shouldn't cancel the previous um, equal value of x, right? So that's sort of the idea here. Um, and now that's pretty much it. Um, now we should be able to just do the base case here, which checks if this is equal to the length of nums. That means we reach at the end, so we return. But we also, this means that we reached a valid uh, subset, and so we can just increment our count. Now there is only one case. This backtracking function will generate all subsets, including the empty subset. But the problem here says we want non-empty, only the non-empty ones. So we should just subtract one. So uh, minus one to remove the empty subset. Okay, because here we count all the subsets. The empty subsets happen if every time for all the indices we call we don't take we don't take. Then at the end we all have an empty subset, right? And notice here we actually didn't maintain the subset because we don't need to. We only need to know um, which ones from the taken x values, which ones are illegal. That's the only thing we need. So we, need, we don't need to maintain the subset. So that's the uh, a good idea to 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 keep in mind here. Um, okay, so let's run this. Let's submit. And this looks good, it passes. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much the idea here. Just use similar backtracking for subset, but add this extra condition that we are asked to do. Um, and this passes fine because the limit is just up to 20, so not too big. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for this problem. Please like and subscribe and see you on the next one. Bye.